The Death Guard are one of the most improved factions in 9th edition, and we've been playing playtesting them for a while now because we are just so enthusiastic about how much they've improved. So today what we're going to do is take you through all the newest strategies and tactics, as well as the things that have changed in their favor and the few things that have changed against them. So stick around. So the Death Guard have a lot to be happy about oh, in yeah. 9th edition. Many things improved. So why don't we run through the list of things that have improved. We'll talk about a few things that haven't. We'll go through a few specific strategies and a few list ideas. Sounds good. So one of the things that was typically tougher for Death Guard was they were slow to get started, right? Yeah. They had to get in the mid board. They often had things they wanted to pop, like Cloud of Flies, buffs, things like that. Yep. Um, and especially if you were playing ITC, there was a large push to kill something in the first turn. That's right. This army was incredibly slow. Yeah. It moved, you know, four inches, five inches, <laughs> half advance rolls. Right. It was famously slow. One of the slowest probably in the entire game. Mm -hmm. I almost can't think of anything slower. And it had very short range shooting. Tons That's of right. flamers, lots of just normal bolters, and then decent combat. So that meant that it really had a tough time playing the game in that first turn. Now, thankfully... You don't have to do that anymore. It's great. Uh, with the removal of things like First Strike, um, again, ITC kills are completely removed from the new missions. Yep. Um, so you can just get in position. You can do nothing for the first turn. That's right. Um, this is something that most armies can do now, but Death Guard are especially happy uh, because that's already the only things they could that's do That's exactly before. right. So. You don't have to kill in the first turn. You don't score points in the first turn. And many of your secondaries, um, you could score in later turns. You don't have to do it. So that slow start, it fits this slow starting army really, really well. Absolutely. It also, one, one thing I wanted to mention was you don't have to overcommit anything, right? Yeah. I can't tell you the number of times when I've played Death Guard and there's that one scout squad up there and I have to throw a drone in there because he can kill them, but then he's overextended and dies immediately. Uh, much more content to just wait for the second or third turn to actually bring him in with all the other buffs. Yeah. The next great so. right thing is, of course, once you get to that middle of the board, the game is all about holding Absolutely. objectives. And to do that properly, you want durable units mm -hmm. that want to stand around on objectives and ideally have objectives secured. Absolutely. So with the changes to scoring, you score at the beginning of the command phase, which means you not only need to get on the point, you need to hold it until the next turn. That's right. So Death Guard are great because they actually do have very strong, very durable OBSEC units. Yeah, the Plague Marines and uh, even the Poxwalkers are both really great at standing mm -hmm. on an objective and holding yeah. it. And then, of course, looking upwards to the Terminators and just about anything, this army can stand in one place and hold. And this kind of brings to the next point is that the army does best at that mid-board. Absolutely. So one of its, its most powerful abilities is it can rapid fire out to 18, right. um, which is great, but still sort of a mid-board range. A lot of things like flight launchers, exactly. obviously the, the flamers really just want to be in a sort of a mid-range. Uh, and that's exactly what the board does. You'll see once you start playing the missions that it doesn't take as much to just get onto the objectives and, and just be in the middle, right? Yeah, so it's probably one of the strongest armies at the mid-board. It's mm -hmm. holding its durable. So what we'd like to think here is that this army just really fits the missions. Absolutely. That's really the key part. Well, another part where it fits the missions is that this army is famously bad at getting kills. Mm -hmm. It's actually only killy when you let it be. You That's have to right. come really close to the Death Guard. <laughs> you have to risk something. It's really hard for them to reach out and get a kill. Absolutely. So the new edition is definitely going to favor armies that can sort of receive charges and react to them, right? right. Things that, that uh, before were very well, well suited to actually overextend, hit something super hard, and then recoil. Um, there's a lot of things we can, we can think about that do that. Yeah. Um, Death Guard, happy to receive the charge, stay on the objective, do what they can. Um, things like the flat Foul Blight spawn become extremely powerful. Because um, it's not that they can't kill, it's just that they don't want to sort of overextend for that. That's right. Now, everyone got the ability to move and shoot with vehicles, yep. and then, of course, to shoot in combat with vehicles, but few armies have better vehicles to do this with than the Death Guard. Absolutely. So, uh, we love the, the Death Guard tanks, but the thing is, most of them are also demon engines. That's right. Which typically have a lower ballistic skill. Uh, they did not ignore uh, move and shoot penalties, so they were hitting on a pretty rough uh, BS. Yeah, yeah, these Plague Burst Crawlers would hit on fives when on they moved. Fives. But they wanted to move because a lot of times people would take them with the Plague Spitters. Absolutely. So, with that all gone, you're now ignoring the penalties. You can actually start using their, their decent movement. That's right. Um, and, and everything like that. They really play the game a lot better because now they're moving up, they're getting into flamer range, mm -hmm. they're still shooting their mortar, um, and then similarly, they, they used to be able to get tagged. They're really hard yes. to kill. So the only way people used to stop them is charging them. Mm -hmm. Well, now you can still keep flaming in combat, and that goes with your uh, uh, yep. with your blow drones as well. Absolutely. And so it's really great. Now, there is one thing that offsets that a little bit, which is mm -hmm. they don't overwatch anymore. No. Yeah, so again, they want to receive the charge. They were yeah. getting their shots in overwatch, which unfortunately you're not getting anymore, uh, but you at least get to, to, to get them back uh, in, the, in the next shooting phase. Um, one thing I'm excited about this is I had a really tough time taking 
uh, these guys in particular uh, without bringing a feculent gnarl maw as an addition. I see. Because you could fall back, could and, fall shoot. back and shoot. Uh, but now you actually have options and you don't necessarily need to bring you that if you're combat. running a bunch. Yeah. Yeah, I really love, we really love the demon engines now. Yeah. And we're going to be going through a list that works with them and some strategies. Absolutely. So that's really exciting. Another big thing is that this army actually used to suffer getting CP. And I'd say the real reason behind that was their troops are fairly expensive. Mm -hmm. But of course, their HQs are very expensive. Yeah. And most of the characters you take are elites, not HQs. So it used to be kind of expensive to get double battalions. Yeah, you'd kind of build your, your central force that would get your battalions, get the CP that you really did need for this yeah. army. Um, and then it didn't leave that much flexibility. I'd say, do I want you know three of the drones or three yeah. of whatever tanks? And with all of that sort of out the door, um, you can take the troops. They are still good. But you can be more strategic and more flexible with your army building. Right, you could take fewer larger squads yeah. in order to pump your stratagems instead of having to space out with five man or seven man right. uh, squads you can take up you can take those larger 20 man or you know 14 and they're man so if you like good at multiples. that right they're, they're so really good really good at, single... at that mm. and that extra cp really helps this army there's some armies that are leveled up a lot by cp with the new psychic 100%. awakening for them i think this army uh, has just a lot of cp you could burn in just in one turn you could burn 10 cp easy yeah the new psychic awakening was amazing um, but yeah. it means yeah you could you could spread them out or you honestly could just burn through a bunch and just throttle it for a yeah. turn or two um, which before uh, again we have played a bit exactly. in 8th edition it worked but this way you could actually do it several times it wasn't like a one trick pony right yeah. looking at you uh, grenade grenade strategy people out there that's right <laughs> well one of the things that also changed is the ability to put any unit in reserve Mm -hmm. And we're looking at something like Mortarian in particular. That's right. You know, there are some games when your opponent just has a line of LAS cannons or missile launchers across from you, and you know that Mortarian's just going to drop first yeah. turn. He is a big unit. He's not going to be able to hide because he's got the 18 wounds. He's exactly. got Titanic. So he can't hide behind those ruins. Mm -hmm. These giant little wings. He's, <laughs> everyone's going to see him. Right. Well, now you can put him in reserve. I think it's about 3 CP mm -hmm. for someone of his power level. And you can wait until you've kind of dealt with that heavy firepower or come in later and surprise them. Yeah, this is a tool that a lot of Death Guard players have wanted for a while. We had a tease of it in like the first month of Where release with demons. deep strike with them. I know, it's yeah. great. Um, but remember that now uh, you don't know who's going to go first. There's right. absolutely no guarantee. It's a 50-50 shot. Right. And so if you see a force that is likely to have enough firepower to do that, now you have an option. You're not going to use it every game, but in the games that you actually do, you think you could need it, it's yeah. absolutely interesting and worth it. And then you can bring them up, in up the board. Um, it's just, it's really exciting. It's better not to have Mortarian for turn one and two and to have him for turns three to five. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I almost always would say that. 100%. One of the most amazing things is the change to the order in which units yes. fight. They've basically made it so that chargers fight first, but then the uh, opponent, the non-active player, mm -hmm. gets to activate first. This interacts with the Foul Blight Spawn in a yeah. really interesting way, right? He's already really powerful. What he does is he makes uh, uh, units within seven inches. If they get charged, they fight first. Well, right? they fight as though they didn't charge. They fight. Oh, that's right. They fight and, as though they didn't. Right. So that's it's right. a seven-inch aura it. of fighting as though you didn't charge, which means now we're on equal footing. Yep. And now the opposing player first. fights first. This is transformative mm -hmm. to this entire army. It is so good that no Death Guard army has any excuse for not including him almost 100% of the time. Absolutely. And you might even consider running two. Um, what we've seen from our yeah. testing is that a lot of these missions require you to be able to push up on two flanks, especially if you want to hold uh, over half the board, which, you know, board control army. Yeah. Uh, and so running one on each side is probably not a bad thing to consider. Well, and he's still a great flamer. He's a ridiculously right? powerful I've flamer. I've had him single-handedly drop Eldar <laughs> fires for me. Right. He's amazing. And now this aura is one of the most powerful one of the most powerful abilities on any data sheet 100%. in the entire game of 40k. Yep, yep. It is just a seven inch aura. What, do you, what are they thinking? It's, it's so ridiculous. Good. So, um, and then you power that, the fact that Plague Marines, if you hit a 10 man, 20 man squad mm -hmm. of Plague Marines, they are vicious in combat now with their yeah, CP. they're great. If you're running into our, our Terminators now, Mm -hmm. Vicious, right? Yeah, and especially with the, the Plague Marines, because they do get a bit pricey for a one wound model, but they hit so, so hard right. that you're really uh, getting that value back, right? A lot of the time, Intercessors were scary because they just get a lot of hits, and they, they ultimately are cheaper right. per wound. Uh, but now, you know, you can absolutely leverage what your units are good at, right? You, you could have been uh, screening with Cloud of Flies, yeah, and then they get exactly. close, and then it's too late. Now you're still not attacking them first. It's awful. It's so cool. Uh, I can only just imagine you're like that Blood Angels player. You've got no guns. <laughs> You've got to come in for the right. charge, and I've just got my little block, oh, and you got nothing. You're, 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 you know, your sanguinary guard are going to come in and just get cut in half. It's so devastating. It's awful. <laughs> it's not all benefits for the Death Guard, although they did get quite a few. Absolutely. Um, one of the things we've been saying for many armies is the fact that the change to terrain and line of sight means that if you're standing in terrain, more often you can be shot at. And armies like this, they wanted to move up through terrain. They wanted to hold and be in terrain because, honestly, shooting is probably the best way to deal <laughs> with the Death Guard. 
mass shooting after a while, and now it's a lot harder to hide. It really is. So uh, if you're playing ITC, as we often did, right. uh, one of the things that was changed about the game was the bottom floor of ruins was considered to be closed, right? So any right. windows or doors, even if you could see through them, were, were uh, closed to, to shooting and, and line of sight. And so what this meant, especially for infantry armies, was it was very easy to put someone in the corner, hold an objective from out of line of sight, be completely safe, uh, unless someone was able to get around or charge you or whatever, right. right? So with the current changes uh, to terrain, really all that's happening there is that is completely going away, Those right? windows are open as long as you're in the terrain. As long as you're touching And you're it. probably going to be in the terrain. Yeah, so um, that just means it's more shooty, and there's a lot of people with bigger guns than the Death Guard, and so they're going to shoot into them. Now, thankfully, this army is durable enough to soak some of that up, mm -hmm. but it's still, it is still a negative. It's a lot. It, it, it is durable, like decently dur yeah. durable, though, and it also has Cloud of Flies. That yeah. is a strat that, luckily, with more CP, you can spend you can do five every CP turn, on it. Every turn. That's <laughs> I right. don't see you not, really, but uh, yeah. So that is a negative, though, at the end of the day. One of the more devastating strategies that the Death Guard used to be able to do was combining a spell Blades of Putrefaction with Veterans of the Long War for That's plus right. two to charge, it also gave you mortal wounds on mm -hmm. five ups. Now, of course, they've capped hit and wound at plus one or minus one. So this plus two to wound strategy is uh, is going to go away. Yeah, that is a bummer. Uh, the, losing the plus two to wound itself is not terrible. Like plus one to wound mm -hmm. is, is decent, but it is the way that it interacts with the uh, with blades to trigger the mortals on fives. That used to be a big, big deal, especially with plague flails exploding into more shots and yeah, more mortal right. wounds. So. Might be it might be good for the game in the long run, but oh, yeah. it definitely it's, hurts. It's a great play, but it's one of the the, the tricks that this army so has, devastating. which isn't a trick in your bag anymore. Yeah. Um, another thing, and this one is much more systemically challenging for them. It's the fact that in most missions, if you look them up, mm -hmm. the objectives are further apart. Right. In many other games that you'll look at today, even the Games Workshop missions, and especially the competitive ITC missions, the objectives are so much closer. Why this is important is the Death Guard work best when clumped up with support characters. Yeah, they just have a million buffs, doubly so with the new Psychic Awakening. So this is gonna be a challenge um, as far as how do you split your force, where do you put them, and have them still do their job, right? This is yeah. something that we've encountered in our playtest games that's really been one of the hardest things for them to sort of adapt yeah. to. It's a very elite army, yeah. and once you start putting the support characters, you really can only be in one spot. That's right. And because they've changed coherency, even your big 20-man Plague Marine mm -hmm. squads, they can't stretch out quite as far. That's right. And so, although you're really good at holding the board, you can hold probably less objectives overall in this new edition. So you might have to find that you focus your attention where the battle's gonna be, and you put smaller, weaker units in places that you think the opponent isn't gonna contest you as much in. Mm -hmm. Or you might have to split up, you know, send a demon prince to go own over here, take your big blob on the most contested part, something like that. That's right. It's gonna be a lot harder. So this army has a long, long history of tagging vehicles, touching right. things that don't wanna be touched, and preventing them from, from shooting. Um, unfortunately now, that's less of a problem. Yeah. Uh, one, it's easier to get out. Uh, two, if you're a decently shooting vehicle, they can often shoot their way out, right? Poxwalkers are decently tough, but only to a certain extent, right? Yeah, once you got the Poxwalkers up the board, if you had a, a shooting army in the back, what they love to do in that turn three, that turn four, was go in and just lock up that whole oh, shooting yeah. army. Now, they can still do it, mm -hmm. right? Having the Poxwalkers go in and touch all those tanks is still great. Many of them with blast and whatnot still can't shoot. But if they yep. have a, gr a bunch of tanks that can shoot their way out, at least you're making them target the Poxwalkers. That's the yep. only thing you're getting out of that's it. That's the thing. And that's going to be something that's, that, that you'll learn as you uh, play test these games or yep. play these games is uh, how many do you need to dedicate to one tank, right? Because if you tagged three different tanks, uh, potentially the first one could shoot the other tanks out, things that's like right. that. Um, and so it's all about perfecting exactly how many is just enough to stop the main thing that you don't want to have shoot, right? That's right. It's a, it's a new kind of art form. Yeah. It's ultimately less powerful, though, which is why we're listing it here as a it negative. Is. I think the other thing, and this won't affect you purists out there, <laughs> but anyone who likes to yeah. zoop in for other chaos detachments, whether that be warp demons. Time. Yeah, mostly to get spells like Warp Time and even uh, Death Hex and a lot of other great spells. Yeah. Um, so you're losing... It, you're not losing access to that, but you're going to pay a lot more CP to get those souped detachments. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I think the cheapest way is probably just take a, a patrol. If you only need one or two HQs, right. you still have to get some, I don't know, cultists or something. Yeah. Um, but regardless, you're still now paying points that you didn't have to before. Before it gave you points. It gave you points. Now it's taking away points. So right. it's, it's, it's a smallish change in the real impact to your game. Mm -hmm. You're still going to have more CP than you probably used to have, yeah. <laughs> but it's still less than you could have is kind of what we're saying. Yeah. Um, one big thing is, of course, the change to the character character targeting rule makes shooting at characters generally easier. Mm -hmm. This army has more support characters than any I can think of. It's got so many, and they're so close together, which largely can still protect them. Right. Um, but there's the danger of 
um, A, the Plague Marines or whatever your screens are charging ahead and sort of leaving them behind, right? That's right. always a danger, which before didn't matter as much because you could just say, well, uh, my pox walkers are going to be closer, right? That That's doesn't right. matter anymore. Uh, and the other danger is, of course, if it's against a very shooty army, they could just shoot everything around and clear yeah. that out, right? So you meet, uh, we really think you want to keep at least a couple different things uh, near those characters so that they have to kind of split their fire or risk not doing anything, things like that. Yeah, so why don't yeah. we go in and take a look at a couple examples mm -hmm. that we think are going to be powerful little strategies to use on the table. In this first example, we're going to show you how to dominate objectives with your Death Guard and your Plague Marines particularly. Let's take a look. We have uh, the, the four custodians are, uh, coming in here. We had our uh, pox walkers, but of course they had a million and twelve uh, hurricane bolter shots. Right. Completely clear that out. And what we want to do is be very, very careful in how we set up on that point, right? So there's a yeah. few things going on. We have a ton of plague marines. We have a foul blight spawn yep. sitting here. So one blight spawn in the middle. That's the only support character we have here, but we'd probably have more. Yeah, I generally will have more, but this is kind of the, the, the essence of it. The basics. And so the first thing we want to check is making sure that there's no point uh, in this unit that these bikes can charge the plague marines and be outside of seven of the foul blight spawn. That's right, because as we said, he has his revolting stench ability, yep. which allows you to fight first within seven. Now, if you had even one model that was outside of that range, mm -hmm. right? Like this model right here, it's not that much further up. It's only about two inches That's further right. up. But if I keep all my models outside of seven and I charge here, we lose his ability. Right. So you've got to be very cautious. But at the same time, we want to be spread out enough mm -hmm. to not allow the custodies to come and be within objective range. That's right. So we have the objective. It's hard to see here, but you can see on the top down, it's right about there. And we don't want them to be within three, but not be within engagement range. So we've pushed up just enough to mm -hmm. keep them out. And there's one other thing we're doing. We have our Foul Blight spawn. Obviously here is kind of just the back, but this is very important because if they're anywhere that's within a realistic charge range of the, of the uh, enemy, whoever they are, they could absolutely declare the character. Might that's be right. a risk, but of course if they don't reach everything that they've declared against, then they completely fail. So we put them out of range. We might even leave it so that if they rolled 11 or 12, they, they could try, but odds right. are that would be a terrible mistake for the other person. And so we're just double checking that there's no way uh, that we're giving an easy sort of charge to the character. That's right. Now, in this case, in many cases, actually, the holding of these objectives is going to be the difference between winning and right. losing a game. So it's very realistic that even though the custodians do not want to charge in this scenario, mm -hmm. they're going to have to risk it. Right. And so in this case, they declare a charge. They come in on our Plague Marines. And now because of that revolting stench, we actually get to fight first. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're not remembering how that happens, the revolting stench takes away their charge and it puts us on equal footing. And now in ninth edition, the opponent gets to activate first, which is really great. It's huge. So now these plague marines, we'd have to put a few strats into them, mm -hmm. right? We'd have sure. to give them some extra buffs, yep. but they could actually take out two of these bikes, maybe even more if we got a little lucky. Um, probably not the whole squad, but that's not important. What's no. important is we've taken the teeth out of this unit and we've prevented them from destroying our unit and taking the objective from us. That's right. Remember, killing doesn't really matter. Killing is just a means to get to objectives, right? That's right. So in here, we're, we're uh, lessening their killing ability. We're putting a bit onto them, but really, we're just trying to make sure that we can stay on this point with our obsec, uh, with more obsec, because they're still custodes, yeah. uh, and, and hold that objective. And ultimately, in 40k, it's often about making trades. Yeah. If you've got a unit of bikes like this, you need it to kill a certain amount of your opponent's army mm -hmm. to get your points back out of it. Whenever you've got a unit that fights first, yeah. it means those combat units always trade down. They always come in, lose so much of their unit before they fight, and that, lose, that lessening of their teeth is enough over the course of a game to make sure that you almost always win. Absolutely. So this is a very, very important tactic to practice in your own games of Death Guard um, in order to play best in 9th edition. Yeah. So let's so take a look at another one, shall yeah, we? Yeah, let's do it. In this last example, uh, we're going to show something that's not necessarily specific to the Death Guard, but it's something that impacts all the armies that want to grab the midboard and kind of hide and hold objectives. Absolutely. And this is something that's important to consider both when you're playing at someone else's house, but also when you're building your own terrain, right? That's right. Uh, with the new terrain rules, the moment that a unit touches a piece of terrain and is in the terrain, it essentially opens up any of these windows and doors that might be in a piece of, of terrain. Yeah, it becomes <laughs> true line of sight. That means right. if you're in the terrain, you could uh, be seen and see as true line of sight. That's right. And as, as we mentioned earlier, we play a lot of ITC where traditionally these would be completely closed and this kind of terrain didn't really matter as much, right? It was, yeah. There was no differentiation. But now, a really, really important part about getting to a table and seeing what's there is looking at these true line of sight moments, right? So what we have is we have a five-man Plague Marine uh, squad uh, and we have an objective right here. Uh, now, this is a... Is a, a a situation to keep an eye out for, right? Because we actually do have an objective that's behind 
a, a true blue closed wall with no That's windows. Right. And this isn't going to happen very often, but no. it's important to know that if I moved back right behind this wall, even if I'm touching the wall here like mm -hmm. I am now, I'm getting the benefits of cover, so yep. I'm getting the ruins giving me the plus one save, mm -hmm. but I'm actually not targetable through that wall. Which, whereas if I accidentally placed one model at this corner here, right at that corner, all of a sudden, I could be seen through here. So you want to look for these spots and tuck in very, very closely. Absolutely. So remember, if, even if there's no objective here, it's still very valuable to be pushing up the board out of line of sight. Uh, now, what this does mean, of course, is you can see here, we are choosing to now actually string out the unit across this terrain, which gives us some advantages, but opens us up to more because the place where you can actually remain hidden is relatively small. Yeah. So this is something to consider, obviously, when you're making your tables, but also when you're making your lists, right? So small, uh, small units can be very valuable. Uh, small Plague Marine squads, Nurglings, because we often bring those into yep. uh, Death Guard armies. These have value because they can still potentially hide on a lot of terrain. Now, speaking of how you build your terrain, what's going to be key is true line of sight. Now, yeah. we've got a ruin here. This is a fairly standard ruin you'll see, our building. You'll see this from something like Frontline. Mm -hmm. It has windows on all sides. Now, in current 8th edition, this was what we used to call a magic box. <laughs> and we called it a magic box because once you went inside, you were completely invisible. That's right. These were all closed. That's right. No one could see in there. And it was actually, you couldn't even go in unless your model physically fit through mm -hmm. the door or you had the infantry keyword. Now, uh, now that you can actually see inside of it, it's important that you can actually place models inside for true line of sight. Because as you can see at the corner here, there is a little spot where maybe you couldn't be seen from an angle. Right. Now, this has giant windows, but you can imagine it having smaller. Yeah. And some of the buildings I have have a lot less. And so that becomes important to be able to remove these <laughs> lids, actually tuck a model into the corner. Yeah. And this is actually a big change to the way the game plays because mm -hmm. before it was easy to abstract. You could easily say, my model's here in the center, and it was kind right. of irrelevant where they were. Now it really does matter where they're positioned within buildings, which means more often than not, you're going to be able to have to build your terrain to be able to come apart and have the models fit in. Yeah, so be very careful when you're building terrain, uh, when you're playing against someone, definitely have that discussion beforehand. If you're looking at running a tournament, this is definitely something that you'll want to make uh, known to your, your players. Um, how is your terrain being, being treated? Because I know there are so many, so many people that have glued the top of this box on. That's right. right. So as we start to adapt, build different terrain, things might change. But for now, there's going to be a lot of discussion around how different terrain affects the current game. Yeah, one last little tip I want to give about a terrain piece like this and about your terrain in general mm -hmm. is I would no longer advise you build things with windows on all sides. Yes. <laughs> if you're building for ninth edition, I think you should take at least one or two of these sides mm -hmm. and close them, board them up, whatever you want to do. Leave a few windows so that someone could still shoot into a box like this, yeah. but don't make it completely see-through. It's a death box right, right now. As we've been saying, if you put this in the middle of the board, as soon as my big tank touches this, it can shoot all the way across the board. Right. You don't really want that anymore. No. And unfortunately, this is what most people's train looks like. Yeah. So for the next several months, maybe even a year plus, this is what the reality is going to be. A lot more line of sight. That's right. So keeping, keep that in mind with all of your games. But of course, of course, with Death Guard, we are a very durable army. We want to take the midboard. And so these are some things to really pay attention to yeah. as you're playing your games. Look for these opportunities to hide. It's going to be a big advantage. So why don't we jump in and take a look at a few of the list ideas we have. Cool. So there's a ton of new army lists you can build, and I love the new flexibility that the detachments provide, but we're going to take you through two, kind of the core of two different lists, and they're both kind of lists that are going around already, so you may have seen some part of it, but I want to talk about how they're going to work in 9th edition. Yeah, so the first list we're going to talk about is a Poxmongers list, yeah. and uh, the Poxmongers are very much about their demon engines. That's right. Uh, and the core of this list really revol revolves around one relic that boot bus uh, buffs everything immensely, it's the Iron Clot Furnace yeah. that just spews like demonic rust everywhere. And it gives demon engines within range of it, which is like seven inches yeah. still, because of course, a four plus plus in foam. And this is huge because almost all of these demon engines, right? And these are, we're looking at things like the, the blow drones, mm -hmm. uh, the plague burst crawlers, crawlers, even the malefic blight haulers. Yeah. Um, these are all great examples. They're all super durable <laughs> for are. their points. Giving them a four up and vulnerable save is absurd. We've played this a few times, mm -hmm. and it is crazy. If you're trying to shoot against these things, you've just got no hope. It's ridiculously durable. Um, the, the person with the relic, as I said, it is one relic, which for me is kind of a danger sign. But yeah. he is so tough, and he's yeah. often hidden between things. Um, you're not really out of danger of losing this into the very, very late game. Right? Yeah, you put it on a demon prince, and you surround him with, with demon engines. Yep. And you actually stack a warlord trait, which mm -hmm. is arch contaminator, yep. which gives you basically reroll all wounds on your plague weapons. Now, thankfully... <laughs> There are almost all plague weapons. Absolutely. Um, not all of them, but almost all. <laughs> and uh, so now you've got this thing where it's an invincible blob, and mm -hmm. they actually output a lot. Now, the reason this is interesting with 9th, because all these vehicles now move and shoot without penalty. Yep. 
and shoot in combat. Absolutely. And one of the new stratagems that we love for the Plague Brisk Crawlers is giving them, giving them the weapon that we actually almost never used before. That's right. The Entropy Cannons. Uh, they're, they're basically the Dark Lances for those of you who are not familiar, but they suffered from the low BS, uh, the move and shoot penalties now. That's right. For the low, low cost of one command point, in a bubble you can basically make them all plague weapons yes. and have a minimum of three damage. Yeah, so you roll d6, minimum of three. <laughs> so that's great. I think both the Flamer and the Entropy are very interesting. You could you could test both. The Entropy Cannons work particularly well in what might become a very vehicle-heavy meta. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's a great list. Now you'd still need to back it up with some Plague Marines yep. to go and grab objectives because as we talked about, the objectives are spaced out. Right. And if you have one big blob that's like 1,400 points of your army, you're holding one objective, right. big big deal. <laughs> exactly. You still need to hold the rest, yep. you still need to play the mission, so don't go too far with this, right? Yep. Don't take it too far. Even having a blob with just three Plague Burst Crawlers and, and a couple Spitters, that's mm -hmm. already enough. If you start taking even more, like nine, <laughs> 10 uh, engines, it's too much. Yeah, we've definitely seen um, kind of playtesting back and forth. We see, well, what did, how does this, this extreme work versus this extreme work? And obviously, the more you move towards one, you can actually become very susceptible to another. So yeah. you can really think of this as a sort of template for types of things that you can include in your army, right? You could have a large yes. section of this, for But example. you could, so instead of putting Plague Marines in there, you could always choose to still tech into other vehicles mm -hmm. and just overload them with vehicles. Mm -hmm. So you could either go Plague Marines yeah. or you could even put some uh, some Hellbrutes in or sure. I love the Defiler right now, yes. especially when you give it Disgustingly Resilient. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> right, and so there's tons of things here. This, the theme is though, lots of demon engines and then vehicles in general and then stack these Warlord traits and relics. Absolutely. It's a, it's a great matchup. But the next army we think is probably even stronger, yeah. and this is using the Mortarian's Chosen Sons. Mm -hmm. And this, if you don't know, has a particular ability that you could give to a Plague Surgeon. That's right. And so normally Plague Surgeons allow you to reroll your disgustingly resilient rolls of one, yes, which is cute, but now you can upgrade it to ones and twos. And of course, with this list, we've gone very heavy on Plague Marines. Yeah, that's right. Rerolling for that, for you, for those of you who aren't thinking about it, you've got a five of Feel No Pain, yeah. you're re-rolling the ones and twos, which a third of the time will become uh, fives and sixes again. And if you're Adrian or I, we make Disgusting Resilience really well, actually. Yeah, it's like 100%. Because we, we've practiced a lot. <laughs> and uh, realistically, this makes your army just super duper durable. So what you do here is you tech into things that are going to benefit from it, particularly, as we said, the, uh, the troops here mm -hmm. and yep. also the Terminators. That's right. And of course, this still goes well with like three Plague Risk Crawlers, giving you some long range, because really this is, again, very much a mid-board army. Yeah. Gets in the middle, holds that, and we really can't overstate the durability of this, right? Like, we're talking about improving this Disgustingly Resilient that's on top of a T5 body, on top of the three-up armor, um, and, and all these things, right? And we talked about the fact that if you want to be on an objective, you're going to be seen, but you can still likely grab cover, right? Yeah. Um, you might even consider taking some Blight Haulers to bring uh, some cover as you're moving up the field to your Plague Marines, right? Yeah. So this is all about leaning into that, taking one or two objectives and going really tough with it. Yep. This is really making one big clump, but it's a larger area than the demon engines alone could sustain. Right. And also, as we're saying, we still do think taking three Plague Burst Crawlers in the backfield are good. Yeah. In this mission, though, you would only take the Entropy Cannons. Yeah, Right. Absolutely. In this, this kind of matchup, you because need if some they're in the back, killing. they need to be further in the back. Yep. You've got your Plague Marines and your Terminators holding the front. Again, it's revolving around using the Foul Blight Spawn, mm -hmm. to ensure that no one can charge you and fight first. Exactly. So basically what you've got here is they can't shoot you, you're holding the board, you're shooting them very right. effectively, and then they can't charge you? It's so So what brutal. can they do? And with the Noxious uh, Blightbringer, which helps everyone move everyone up, you can also take the Relic to give them a 5 plus invuln. Of course. As well on top of everything. Yeah. It's really good. We so, are loving this. Yeah, so this army does it all. This is probably some variation of this is the one that we're going to be playing. And of course, mm -hmm. we are going to be playing the Death Guard this week. Absolutely. And so uh, watch out. We're going to be bringing an army just like that to the table. Um, but of course, just like all these other videos, we're going to be continuing to do tactics for almost every faction in the game. We might not mm -hmm. quite get through them all, but most. And we're going to be doing battle reports for almost every faction in the game as well. I think Papa Nurgle would be uh, happy about the veritable... Uh, gushing forth of videos that we're putting yeah, out. That's right. <laughs> so definitely make sure you guys like and subscribe. Uh, stay tuned. We're dropping them constantly. Uh, and we're really excited to see what you guys do with this information. Let us know. Hop in chat. Uh, and we'll see you guys at the next uh, game. We'll see you there.